properly and worshiping God and approaching God in the correct way that God wants to be approached. Now, before you lose out with me, I'm going to be saying a lot of stuff here at the beginning. I don't want anyone to lose out with me. Just hang on. You know me. I, uh, I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to bring home. I'm going to show. I'm going to love people. I'm going to do what's right. But let's start out by looking at Psalms 24. Psalms 24. And I'll give you an opportunity to share your heart and some thoughts uh, as we get toward, as we close up, as always. Psalms chapter number 24. I want to read half of that chapter there. The Word of God says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the, the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. There's a popular uh, phenomenon that is taking place, a relatively new but yet progressively uh, increasing a, a, a development in Christianity that, that, that gives the idea of come as you are. Don't lose out with me. I'm going to explain myself. All right? Don't lose out. We'll get there in just a few moments. But if you would go back in the culture of Christianity based upon the Word of God, I know some people say, well, Brother Seville, you need to get progressive. You need to be more progressive. It's okay to be progressive as long as you're not detouring away from the Word of God. Progression doesn't mean that we compromise the Word of God. And so if you go back uh, uh, several years ago, uh, you'll find that there was a lot more thought about coming to church than what there is today. There's relatively not much thought required in coming to church. And really being a worshiper uh, nowadays, uh, in the church world at least, it has no requirements to it. You can come and worship as you are. Come as you are. Worship as you are. And so it's spread rapidly across America and you'll find that most of the mega churches, most churches that are popping up and growing in leaps and bounds, they're telling folks, come and worship as you are. Come as you are and worship as you are. And uh, you'll see banners that will proclaim, come as you are. And, and, and so a little bit about what I want to talk about tonight is this is that, sure, we want to see church growth and we want to see people coming to church. That's what it's about. We don't want it to be us for no more. We're to go into all the world and spread the gospel to every creature. We should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that Jesus saves. And that is the gospel. We should be living our life in the Spirit of God <coughs> that convicts men of their sins and it preaches and persuades of Jesus Christ and the work of the cross. Jesus that saves. And so there are some churches that will do anything on any level to fill a spot in their pew, anything to get a warm body in there. Uh, but I want to tell you that as they approach folks to come as you are, they don't care how people dress, how people look. They don't care if they come with a, 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 a hangover. They don't care if they come shaven or their hair combed. They don't care if they come uh, 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 in their rock and roll t-shirts or in modest clothing that, that, that is revealing of the body that, that, that should be kept to the sanctity of marriage. Uh, uh, we just want you in our church, so come as you are. And then it goes on down to say, you can, you can sing in the choir as you are. You can teach a Sunday school class as you are. You can be on the board as you are. And so it's no longer about reaching sinners. It's about allowing the lost to think that they can come as they are, and they can. 
But those who are saved should not be coming as they are. You see, uh, we can come as you are because we are loved. Absolutely, we can come. No one should feel as if they can't come before God and come out love. God loves them. And uh, God wants them. Uh, the, the, the thing that we're telling sinners nowadays is that they don't have to, they don't have to, to, to uh, fear when they come to Christ. And you don't have to be fearful. He will accept you as you are. But what we're telling them is you can come any way that you are. You can approach God any way that you are. But you don't need to be changed. Continue to stay as you are. So many churches, that's their gospel. And I'm not saying we need to clean ourselves up before we come to Christ. We all know that old saying, you can't clean a fish before it's caught. You've got to catch the fish before you can clean it. However, I need to tell you that we have to, as a church and as believers, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ that changes lives. You know, I don't believe that you, you still have to be tipping the bottle for a high when you know Jesus. He should be your high. I don't believe that you have to wake up in the morning hugging the toilet when you love Jesus. Amen? Because your life should be changed from those bondages that you once had. And He should be your source and your center of joy. Amen? Come as you are. Those slogans seem to confuse people about the nature of God. Because I need to tell you what the nature of God is. The nature of God is that He is holy. And there should be something about approaching a holy God that says, I need to respect God. And there should be something about the house of God that we need to respect the house of God and we need to uh, enter into the things of God respectfully. Uh, this idea of being casual and lazy and we can approach God any way that, that, that we want. It, it, it brings confusion to real true worship to God. God wants holy and pure worship. He doesn't want folks that are living in sin any way that they want to come and think that they can live up their hands when God is looking for a holy hands without wrath and without doubting. He's looking for holy hearts. And so uh, when, we, when we say come as you are, we want folks to come as they are. We want them to know that though regardless of your sin, regardless of where you've been or where you're at, God loves you, but God wants to change you. And because you met with a holy God, amen, you're leaving a different way and you're walking away in the spirit and you're walking away with the love for the word of God that now when you come back to a holy God you do it so reverently uh, that you're not casual but you have prepared yourself to worship God. Sinners typically aren't coming in prepared to worship God. They're not. But we as believers should be prepared for worship when they come before God and to the house of God, and we're around the things of God. Come as you are. It's the sense of this, that it doesn't matter what you do, you'll please the Father. That's contrary to Scripture. God does care what you do. And our desire should be to please the Father. Let me tell you, it's nothing that we do, our time, our money, our efforts could never buy our way to a right relationship with God. I think a better way for us to approach it is not come as you are, but come as He is. Because the only way that we can approach the Father is through the atoning work of the Son. When we come before God, I can't make a deal with Him, Dennis. I can't say, God, but, but I've been trying to live right. I've been watching my P's and my Q's. I've been watching how I'm loving on people. I've been watching every word that I say. I've been watching the way. None of that, none of that. Our own righteousness is as filthy rags. In fact, if we come to God on our own merit, you know what we deserve? We deserve death. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, 
He took the death for us. So without Jesus Christ, not one of us here can approach the Father. So instead of coming as we are, we need to come as He is. Jesus said this. He said, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. So as we approach God, it's not coming as we are, but it's coming as Christ is. As a sinner, we come and we say, God, here's my brokenness and here's my sin. And here's, here's my life. I have nothing to offer you but filthy rags. And they're nothing. My righteousness is nothing. But I come to you with faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. I come to you believing in the work that Christ did on Calvary. He said that He is the way and He is the truth and He is the life. So here is my ticket, God, amen, to be able to come to you. It's through Jesus Christ. And so I come not as I am, but I come as Christ is. Jesus. Amen is the only way that we can get to God. So not coming as we are, that's fleshly, but coming as Christ is on the basis of what He's done on Calvary. And we have access to the Father through the mercy of God through Jesus Christ. So I want our church to be a place not where Folks come and say, well, I'm going to worship as I am. But I want us to worship as Christ is. That's holy. That's righteous. See, when we look at the Word of God, I think that we'll better understand how that we as men and women should approach God. When we look at the Old Testament, you'll see that there's examples of how that they approach God. Now let me say something. I'm going to be looking at the Old Testament of ways that men approach God. And I know that all of a sudden, are you listening to me? I'm watching you perk your ears up and listen to this. This is going to be the first thing they're going to throw out to Jesus to God. They're going to say, but wait a second. We're not living in the Old Testament. The veil, Brother Doug, is now rent. In, 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 in between us and the presence of God. So we no longer have to worry about that. You know, that may have changed that the veil is rent and we no longer have, have a veil of justice between us and God. But one thing that did not change, the holiness of God did not change just because the veil has been removed. And so that's so important for us to remember. Amen. Calvary did not change God. His nature is still holy. But the good news is Calvary didn't change God, but Calvary changed us. And so now we approach God not as we are, but as He is. And that's so encouraging tonight. That's why we live holy. That's why we live righteous. Oh, well, let me say here again, come as you are is the idea that, that is originally targeted to sinners, amen, uh, that, that we want them to know that they can come to God as they are, but as saints and as worshipers, we can't come to God as we are, but we've got to be washed in the blood, and our nature and everything about us has to change, and we have to come as Christ is, and He is holy. Never was there a man like this. They couldn't find any action. Accusation on him. He claims to be the Son of God. He did miracles. Never a man spoke like this. That's all the accusations they could come against him with. He was holy. And so as we come before God, we need to come as Christ. Now, there are some things that, that I want us to think about. I don't want to upset anyone here, but I want to be honest. I have some classmates uh, that I went to Bible school with. They pastor in many churches. A couple of them pastor in many churches. And uh, I, I was disturbed because I was watching their song service. And uh, I'm not watching, but seeing pictures of their song service. Uh, I came up on my news feed. And uh, they were up there, and in the sanctuary was dark, and there was lights on the stage. You know, I, 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 I know all that's appealing to the emotion and to the feel. It's what we, it's what we see 
the, the ambience, if you would, and all that. I understand all that. I, I think that we're, we we can use technology to our favor, but 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 let me also say that let's not try to replace God with technology. But the greatest thing that disturbed me is that there's some leader was up there with a baseball cap on, just leading in worship. You know, there comes a place of respect. We're not on the baseball field. We're not at some concert. No one's out me. Let me get to our point. But this is a holy place. And we're worshiping a holy God. Can I worship God in my baseball bat cap? Sure. I have a sure can. But I believe that when we come before the presence of God, there's a reverence we take on. And allow me to say in a very, in a very positive way, allow me to say. There's also a part of modesty. You know, when, when, when parts of the body is being um, shown, you know, how modest is that before God? It's not, it's not being respectful of our brother or our sister. Uh, let, me, let me get down, and you may say, well, Bill, you're, 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 you're kind of getting to the nitty gritty. Let me just say something. I believe that when we get up, and on Sunday, part of our coming to the house of God should be, and I'll tell you why. Yes, I probably do like to dress up. But part of my liking to dress up is I've always been taught to put your best on for God. Well, today I probably have a little bit more best than what I have at other times in my life. And there's a lot of times in my life, and still, we can freak with goodwill. I don't care. I don't care what you spend on your clothes. But I'm just saying, put, putting your best on. I have, I have issues when folks look like they come in their pajamas. Come as you are. But you know, as you get saved here in worship, you know, it's time to put your best on to God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> that, that may sound harsh. Everybody's best is different, and I'm not, I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we live in a culture where you go to McDonald's and they come in with their pajamas. Good grief. Are you that are you that are you that bad off you can't get dressed before you go to McDonald's for breakfast? Really? Okay, I'm gonna get off that because you know that does because it's even deeper. We look at the Old Testament. And the priests were not to come and offer sacrifices unto God as they were, but there were strict guidelines to their dress and the way that they would cleanse themselves and the way they were to approach God. Let me read for you in Exodus chapter number 30. The word of God says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a labor of brass, and, uh, and his foot also of brass, to wash with all. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. Uh, for Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat, uh, where, when they go into the tabernacle of, of the congregation, they shall wash with water, that they die not. It was necessary that they washed with this water before they came to the presence of God. Why? God took this so serious that he said, I don't want them to die. He said, he said, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to, to, to burn offerings uh, made by fire unto the Lord, so they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not, and it shall be a statute forever to them, even to them and to his seed throughout their generations. You see, when they came before the presence of God, there had to be some thought and there had to be some actions taken to coming before the presence of God. When we come before God's presence, I truly believe that we should come with our hearts prepared. You know, I, I, I believe that, that as we come, and, 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 the, and I think that we should grow, and we should want to be in positions and leadership, and we should encourage one another. And part of that is, is that, that we come to church, and, and, and I come prepared uh, to worship God in my attire. But not only on the outside, more importantly, even I believe it is, that on the inside that we're prepared, that we've washed ourselves uh, with, with the Spirit of God, the, the water of God's Word, that we are ready to worship that we've taken 
taken time to pray, that we've taken time to examine ourselves, that we've taken time uh, just to be in the presence of God, that we've even adjusted our schedule. I don't want anyone to lose out with me, but it's disheartening for Brother Seville when, when he preaches and everybody has to, as soon as he's not done preaching, leave the sanctuary. We've not even allowed ourselves time for, time for prayer. We need to pray. That needs to be a part of our, our routine that, that, that we pray. And I believe in fellowshipping with one another. Or I don't have time for the house of God. Or I don't have time to, to sit through the message. Or I don't have time to... We need to prepare for that. Amen? Because God wants us to approach Him. I love, I love, I saw the slogan recently. It said, Sundays were made for worship. I believe that. Sundays were made for worship, but there's preparation and worship. Ask Aaron, ask the priesthood. That we come expecting God. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I believe part of why we don't see revival is, is we're so busy and consumed with everything else that we don't make time. We don't make time for God and God to be the center. We don't make time for prayer. We don't make time to have our minds upon the things of God. God may want to use you to pray for someone. God may want you to be the one who spends time for it. I believe that brings revival. As we come as real worshipers, prepare. Not as we are, but as Christ is. Do you remember Moses in Exodus chapter number 3? Here he is, this 80-year-old man, and God is speaking to him through a burning bush. And the Bible says uh, uh, that God called them out of the, out of the bush in, in Exodus 3, verse 4 and 6. And uh, he said, Draw not hither, but put thy shoes off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, and the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of Moses. <laughs> And, and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. You see, the correct way to come before God is that we want to make sure that we're ready. God said to Moses, take your shoes off. This is holy ground. Do we realize that when we come in to worship, whether there's five or whether there's 75, uh, however many is in our service, God wants us to come with the attitude of worship. And the greatest way that we can develop that culture and that atmosphere is when we begin to practice it and other people see it. That, that this isn't just this just isn't a ball game. This isn't a trip to Walmart. This isn't a trip to McDonald's. But this is a trip into the presence of God. I've come to worship Him. This is holy ground. And I know, I know once again, I'm not criticizing anyone. But it's the whole being of us. And that's the best way I can say it. From inside to out. Let me tell you what. If I knew that I was going out to take my wife to a very plush date dinner where it was very nice. You know, there are some atmospheres. Do you know there are some restaurants you can't wear jeans? You know, there are some restaurants where your attire has to be. If I was going to that, I would dress appropriately. And you know what? I would shave myself, I would fix my hair I have to look decent, you know, I would make sure that I brush my teeth, and, and you know, I, you know, I'm saying all that, it's so simple, but I think sometimes we become so casual about God, that we don't cleanse our hearts and our hands, we don't put ourselves in the place of worship, but we come before the presence of God. So I don't really want to put my best foot forward for y'all. I do. I do. Your best foot is whatever you put forward. Like I said, that's just completely being ready to be in the presence of God. We want any one of this community to come to church as they are. I'll never look out on anyone, no matter how they come. You know? I can't give up. I might get someone called to think I'm going to be real, real, and honestly, that would be, yeah, maybe not. We want them to come as they are. But we want worshipers to know that we're coming as Christ. Moses took his shoes off because it was holy ground. 
We're to come. Our scripture says that we read there in, in, in Psalms chapter number 24 about the person who can ascend into the holy hill. He who hath clean hands and a pure heart and a mouth lifted up a soul in vanity. We want our hearts to be clean and we want our hearts to be pure. I believe this more than anything. I believe that if we want to see revival, you with me. I believe if we want to see revival, the key is clean hearts. Clean hands and a pure heart. I'm not saying there's not more to it, but I'm saying I believe that's the key. When we come before God with clean hands and pure heart. I want to look at the correct way to worship God. I believe that we can worship God with the beauty of holiness. And so what are some keys, what are some ways that we come not as we are, but as Christ is, that we can worship God? The first thing is this. I believe it's that we need to come holy. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles, I'm going to read these verses tonight just because of the clock. I'm going to give you time to talk. The Bible says, give unto the Lord the glory that is due His name. Bring an offering and come before Him and worship the Lord in the beauty of God of holiness. Holiness encompasses a lot of things. It is just from inside out to outside in every part of us wanting to be holy and pure before God. And the correct way to worship God, amen, is that we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. It's not coming as we are without ever having the blood of Jesus applied to our life. It's not coming as we are thinking that our, our ways are right. Remember, the Word of God says, there's a way that seemeth right unto the man, but, a man, but the ways thereof, uh, the end result is death. Amen. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it God's way. I don't want to come as I am. I want to come as Christ is. Amen. I want the beauty of holiness to be reflected to, through me. And I want my worship to be a beautiful act before God. You know, when I come before God's presence, I want to know that, 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 that I've been living right. I've examined myself. That I love Him. I've been lining my life up with His Word. I, I, I want to do it His way and not my way. Uh, the culture, I don't want it just to be about having another warm body, but I want this church to be full of men and women that love God and the culture of their life is directed after the heart of Jesus Christ. That's coming to God the right way. We need to approach Him fearfully. I'm not saying that we need to be afraid of God. Of God. But there needs to be a reverence. Psalms 111.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have they all that do His commandments. His praise endure forever. When we fear God and we reverence Him. I ask you this. You don't need to raise your hand. Any of you ever drive by a police officer and you're speeding? No, it's a... Or you know you're speeding and there's lights behind you. Yes, sir. Here's my driver's license. Here's my registration. Here's my insurance. You know, what is all that? Because there's a healthy reference fear of what God has set up in the law of honor. There should be something not that we're fearful, but that we're reverent. God, I revere you and your presence. Your presence is nothing to be taken away from me. The blood of Jesus is nothing to be taken away from me. Thinking I approach it any way that I want is contrary to the Word of God. So God, with fear and reverence, I come before the throne. The next thing that I want to look at, the third thing, so we come holy, we come fearful. The third thing is humbling. We never should be proud, but we should be humble. Be able to come before the presence of God. The Word of God says in Isaiah 57 15, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth, inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, 
I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. God wants us to approach him humbly. God, I humbly need you. I humble myself before you. You ever just fall in a place of worship or you're just humbled by the awesomeness of God because you know what is man that, that God you're mindful of?